Hi, my name's Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our August Premium Box. This month's box is all about metallics. We'll go over how to use the materials, how best to work in a metallic color story, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with them. Let's get into it! For our servers this month, we have a black watercolor paper pad from the Van Gogh Company. This cold press paper has a slight tooth to it and is absorbent, so it's perfect for our wet medium this month. The next three items in our box are going to be a set of Sketchbox Signature Exclusive Shimmer Art Crayons from the Marabou Company. These art crayons act a little bit like oil pastels and will help to reveal some of the texture of our black paper, while still giving us a lot of shimmer and shine. They feel great to hold and we can always extend the tip by twisting the back component of our art crayon. Here I'm going to sketch in a loose carnation really just focusing on the line and the overall shape of the flower. This is a great tool if you're into zen doodling or want to work in a more abstract method this month. Let's grab the Sketchbox Signature Round Brush in a size 4 included in this month's box and use it to explore some of the water-soluble qualities of our art crayon. By using just a little bit of water in the tip of our brush, we can activate the art crayon and achieve really fine detail. Now, as we push around that pigment, it is going to become more transparent. So I always like to work from my brighter areas to my darker areas to help those gradients make sense. Now, if you haven't worked on black paper before, it can be a little bit tricky. And that's because you're going to have to invert your thinking. Your darker areas are going to be where the paper shows through the most. Whereas on white paper, typically the areas that you don't touch are going to be your brightest. With my paper fully dry, I can go back in with our art crayon and really push those highlights. Let's grab the next item in our box, the Graphics Aqua Ink in Metallic Copper from the Marabou Company. True to its name, this art supply is a mix between watercolor and ink. My favorite thing about this art supply is just how opaque it is. Straight out of the bottle, we can get really nice flat areas. I'll take advantage of this and create a simple rose, focusing on the petal shape, and being conscious of the negative space like we talked about in our January video. Now if you're a new subscriber or just need a bit of a refresher, head over to our YouTube channel and check that video out. We do a deep dive in all things abstract floral. With my outside edges established, I'll go in and start to fill that interior circle with some petals. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to make sure to reflect the three-dimensional form of that blossom but I'm not getting too caught up with trying to be realistic. We're kind of going for a stained glass effect with this. Now, if you're new to floral illustration or just want to try something with this month's prompt, Bloom, try this approach. It's more approachable and it's a great way to get your mind to simplify complex forms. Next, I'm going to rub off a little bit of that art crayon on my palette. You can use anything that's hydrophobic for this, so a coffee mug or a bowl. And I'll use it to create some accent leaves that are going to be a bit more transparent so they're not going to compete with our flower. This is a great technique if you want to create more fine details with those art crayons. Once I'm happy with my leaves, I'm going to go in and add a few accent lines and dots around the edges. This will help to soften the transition between our black and our metallic areas because we're working in a really high contrast this month. And as you can see, that aqua ink is super shimmery and bright when we allow the light to catch it. Let's grab the next two items in our box, a set of metallic watercolor pans from the Fine Tech Company in golden rose and blue silver. These premium watercolors are light fast and offer an intense amount of pigment. Because of the purified gum arabic in these pans, the pigments will dilute really quickly when we add a bit more water, allowing us to create some beautiful and subtle gradations. My favorite part about these pans is that we can dilute them with water without staining the page. That allows the black of our paper to shine through a little bit more and give us a higher level of contrast. And let's not forget just how stunning these pans are when we let them catch the light. While a round brush might be a very common brush, it's actually incredibly versatile. It's really flexible and can hold a lot of pigment. Let's explore some different techniques that we can use with our round brush. The first is going to be an abstract floral. So I've taken that golden rose 
and want to build a petal system around the edges. We talked about this technique in depth in January, but the real trick to it is just to vary the amount of pressure that you exert on the brush. Now I know that working on black paper can be kind of intimidating, but we can make things easier on ourselves by setting up a few guides. So here I'm going to create a couple ovals using a transparent wash, which is going to act as the base for a few of my flowers. With my guides fully dry, I'll go back in with some of the aqua ink and create our petals. That oval is going to ensure that my flower looks round and three-dimensional. We just need to make sure that our petals follow that sphere so that we're reinforcing that three-dimensional effect. The other benefit of setting up those oval guides first is that they allow us to tone the paper a little bit. So our contrast isn't going to be as sharp as it is with our rows. By using a light hand with consistent pressure, we can use our round brush as more of a liner. I'll divide our oval into four parts to create a simple flower. By using short strokes and a heavier pressure, we can create a wheat element from stamping our brush. And we can always use the tip of our brush to clean up those shapes. Next, I'll wash out my brush with a bit of clean water and then take our blue silver and explore a looser, more sketchier style. By varying our line weight through our strokes, we can give our blossom a little bit more attitude in life. To balance out the colors in our composition, I'm going to go in and add a few leaves around the piece. I prefer split leaves as they give us a little bit more form, but if you're interested to learn how to do single stroke leaves, definitely check out those January videos. Let's grab the last item in our box, the Sakura Metallic Jelly Roll Pen in gold, and use it to add some details to our flowers. I'm also going to add a few dots and flourishes around the edges to help soften up the contrast between our metallics and the black of the paper. And if you find yourself getting a center line when using your gel pen, try cleaning off the tip and using a little bit less pressure. That's all for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxAugust. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.